Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Imagination Tech. So I just reviewed the ISD DQ8 in my last video and it was a really great charger. Today I have here the Toolkit RC M6D. Now I'm not the first person who's going to be reviewing this and I probably won't be the last, but I saw Joshua Bardell's video and uh, he basically summed this up by the watts per hour as another cheap charger. Now the M6D is uh, five, actually $5 more than the ISD DQ8. And uh, there were a host of other features that uh, Bardwell just uh, didn't even bother discussing. So I think it's only fair that we give this uh, another shot. So stay tuned because you're gonna learn something today. <laughs> okay, I'm just messing with you. If uh, Joshua Bardwell, if in case you ever see this video, you know, my wife and I love you and uh, we watch all of your videos. Anyway, stay tuned. Let's go ahead, not waste any time, and let's just open this thing. Okay, so it has a standard. Okay, it's not a standard. It is a USB to USB interface. Um, it has um, a quick, I guess these are quick start instructions because uh, the PDF instructions that you can download off of their website is uh, much more complete. So taking a look at the M6D dual smart charger, we have um, an XT60 input, which can take from 7 to 28 volts, as opposed to the ISD TQ8, which needs uh, at least 10 volts. So that means you can power this off of a 2S, whereas with a Q8, you would need a 3S battery. It also has an output of uh, a 5 volt 2.1 amp. Um, you know, it's a quick charge for whatever, like your cell phone or whatever USB device you might have. Uh, and um, I guess this is also how you would connect this to your computer. So it has a really large fan, uh, also has vents on the other side. So at least that is going to dissipate heat a lot better, I guess. It has two balance ports and these, can, these both can take uh, 6S batteries and it has a temperature sensor right there. Actually it looks like uh, you know, the Digicam from the early 2000s. Um, but yeah, it, it is a little bit uh, bigger than the Q8 by but not by much. They both have 2.4 inch uh, IPS displays that is uh, has a res resolution of 320 by 240 except that on the ISDD it's uh, oriented vertically whereas here it's uh, horizontal. The surface of this thing is actually a bit nicer than the ISDT. Um, the ISDT is prone to scratch so that's why they included um, you know that um, screen protector with with uh, the ISDT but uh, Toolkit RC I think um, has the better screen. I don't think it looks like it will hold up much better, although it does have a very reflective surface, so we'll see. Anyway, let's plug in a battery and see what this thing can do. Right. On the main screen, you would see three pages of information for each channel. So the first page would obviously be uh, the cell voltage, the second would be the internal resistance, and the third would be the status. Uh, right now it's charging, it, it's charging a LiPo 4S battery at 4.2 volts and at 1.3 amps. But if it's not charging like this second channel, then it will just show you standby. Um, up here you can see how much volt, what the LiPo voltage is and how much amps are being put in, as well as the progress meter of, uh, of the battery, of, of the charge, and how much uh, milliamp hours have been put in. And right here on top, you would see the input voltage, um, the, the amps that are being drawn, the watt hours, and of course the charger temperature. Let's go into the settings menu by holding on to this uh, switch. Right, so in the input settings, you can choose between the power type, which, uh, you know, it changes between ba adapter or battery, or, you know, ad adapter is also if you're just using a power supply. Since I'm using right now a, a 3S battery, maybe you can set this to, um, like uh, what would be the minimum 10.5 so at least when it goes down 10.5 um, it's going to throw an error what the, the toolkit rc and my original accucell c6 uh, sorry accucell 6 four button charger used to have that the isd doesn't have is uh this safe time setting for example if you have a, a battery that's uh, really badly balanced it's, it's old you need to retire it and uh, you try to balance it and it never balances it out. The ISDT will just continue charging it 
until you know until something explodes but uh, you can set like a time limit you know a typical lipo battery should be finished in 30 minutes to an hour so you could set probably like uh, a safe time of 120 minutes that should give you enough time uh, for the charger to balance even you know even a poorly balanced so yeah that's uh, that's a great feature that the ISDD chargers for some reason don't have the low setting on the ISDT is still brighter than uh, this setting of one and you know with the ISDT you can only set it to low medium high whereas this it goes from one to ten so at least you can really fine-tune and dial down that uh, you know t that screen not that you would probably need it I just want to check if um, both of them are you know would give me the right uh, the same voltage calibration okay so we have three point three point seven oh one six nine six seven oh five seven oh eight no way I'm going to memorize that, but at least we have, you know, uh, ballpark figures. Already we have uh, three decimal places right from the screen. So, third, uh, the third cell is a little bit high, I think, 7.7, 7.8. If you have a high precision multimeter, then that would be, that would do you much good. But, um, you know, there are differences in the third decimal place. It's not really going to be uh, a problem because it's in the third decimal place again. <laughs> So th again, that is assuming that the ISTT is more accurate than the Toolkit RC. If you do need to calibrate your charger, you need to hold down the power button as you turn it on. I think maybe we need to plug a balance port in. There has been some history with the old um, M8 chargers not being accurate or you know um, going out of calibration over time. Time will tell if, uh, if those same problems will uh, be prevalent here with the M6D but uh, you know I would recommend that uh, every now and then maybe after uh, a month or two uh, you, go, you go back here and uh, check the, your settings uh, again and see if uh, any calibration is needed. So you have two channels and you can switch between them using this one. You can either have the orange selected which is the left channel or blue which is uh, this right channel. So let's say we're going to charge the first one so you can see you have five battery presets here. So I think ISDT was trying to copy, you know, uh, these uh, profiles, but they only limited themselves to remembering the last five current settings that he used. Whereas with the Toolkit RC M6D, uh, you have full-fledged profile selections. So um, it saves complete profiles if it's charging or discharging, what kind of LiPo, how, what, how much current. So this is really great. For example, if the first thing is if I'm going to be using that for 4S batteries. Um, so it, it's, uh, you can see LiPo, uh, auto, uh, auto detect or at auto uh, select the cells. And for, uh, you know, this, uh, my fifth profile is for, if, for example, if I'm uh, parallel charging like three 450 milliamp hour batteries, you can already see the, the, all of the important settings here. From this, uh, from this screen. If you need to clear a profile, you can just hold on to the button and it'll just uh, it'll clear that uh, slot. So this should be pretty similar to you if you've used um, you know, um, an ISDT, oops, sorry, an ISDT charger. So you can choose between different battery types. So, okay, we'll just keep it on LiPo. Right now we have a 4S battery plugged in um, and we can set the charge current to by the way, I haven't mentioned this enough, but uh, I, I like having a physical scroll wheel over a touch sense, the capacitive touch uh, screen. Our mode is charge. You can choose between charge, discharge, and storage charge. So if you can, you can switch between uh, channel one and channel two. And th there is also a dual uh, setting, which and this just means that whatever setting you choose here is applied to both channels. And you can hit on start and both channels 1 and channel 2 will uh, charge at the same time with the same settings. Next let's go into the discharge mode. Discharge mode has two modes which is uh, inter for internal and recycle and uh, this is particularly useful because when you choose recycle you can increase the discharge voltage all the way up to 15 amps. Now you know typical chargers even the ISDT chargers you usually just discharge at uh, 0.5 amps or uh, in the case of the Q8 it can go up all the way up to wow 1.5 amps this can go all the way up to 15 amps and the way it does this is instead of discharging them through the you know internal circuitry through a resistor or uh, or a fan it does this by uh, draining the lipo and uh, charging the input voltage so it's like a reverse uh, reverse current and um, 
You can also put in an input max voltage since we've set our uh, input to 12.6 as well because it's a 3S LiPo. It's automatically set to an input max voltage of 12.6. So whatever you, whatever max voltage you put in your input settings, uh, that is also going to be the default. But you, of course, you can change this and you can lower it down to the, you know, the the base, the minimum input that you've also set there. So if we start that it's going to discharge at a much faster rate all the way to 15 amps you need to change your input type to battery if you want to use recycle otherwise if you choose adapter which is uh, for which is uh, the one you choose for a power supply then only internal would appear here now if you select the battery type power now this is uh, this is just like the new Q series from ISDD also has a DC power um, setting the maximum current instead of just 10 amps with ISDT Q8, it can go all the way up to 15 amps. 28 volts is plenty for me, but you know, having that much current available to me, now that is, uh, that is really something. So here's my Ultra Power UPS 6 1S charger. You just press on start, and it'll start supplying that uh, 12 volts, six amps to that, uh, to whatever device it's connected to. The TS100 is now turned on and I can just uh, turn it on and let's see how much amps it draws. So it doesn't really draw that much amps, it draws right like three amps. So here's my 3D printer and it's heating the hot end at 3.5 amps. So it's now printing and it's drawing anywhere from between two and five amps. One more battery type I wanna show you is the UAV bat, which is something quite unique because with here, you can choose which drone model. You can choose between a Mavic 2, a Mavic S, Phantom, or Inspire. You don't need to balance them. They have their own balance circuitries, their, their own uh, battery management systems. So uh, presumably, you would just uh, need a harness, uh, an XT60 plug, going into something that is compatible with, uh, with the battery. If you have this in your bag and you, you travel a lot, then you can just leave your DJI chargers and just bring the Toolkit RC and you're good to go. So let's go back to the settings menu and take a look at these two options. So first we have a synchronous mode and uh, normally when you're charging, um, you can charge up to a maximum of 15 amps per channel. So 15 amps is already really big, but let's say you're charging something really, really big like a 6S 25,000 milliamp hour battery. So with synchronous mode on, you would have both channels working together to charge a single battery. So for example, this is a 6S or a 4S 12, 25,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's going to be really, really big. We would need to make a, an adapter that splits this XT60 to two. So you plug it in both here and you would plug in the parallel port to uh, the balance port to one of these. And uh, so both of these uh, both of these channels, which are 15 amps each, will be able to output a maximum of 25 amps to that single battery. Now this other mode, which is continuous work, if you turn this on, so when you're charging your LiPo, when it's fully charged, the charger is gonna stop. But uh, with a continuous work, when it stops, you would just need to unplug the battery, wait for two seconds, plug in your next one, and it's going to start automatically. Now that feature is something that's going to be really, really useful for those who are on the field, wants to get as much flights as they can or on the race and they just can't be bothered to fill with their chargers. So I think that is a really, really good, uh, it's a really good um, you know, feature to have. And you also have two channels. So if you're not a fan of uh, uh, parallel charging, especially if you're, if you're on the field, you just want to you know, keep plugging in a new battery. You don't need to, um, make sure that you don't need to check if their voltages are at the same level. So you just you know plug in the next battery, step away and fly again. And then you come back when it's finished, change the battery, plug in a new one, and you know it's a continuous operation. It's like a it's like a factory. It's like an assembly line. You can have multiple operations going on at the same time. In channel one, I have a 4S LiPo that is uh, charging, and on channel two, I have a 3S 450 milliamp hour LiPo that is discharging, and it is also recycling the input LiPo, which is a four, which is a 3S 1300 milliamp hour battery. You can download the M6D manual and firmware from the Toolkit RC website, which I will link to down in the description below. After downloading one of the firmware files from the website, you just need to extract the files and put it somewhere. Updating the firmware on your M60 is very simple. You just need to plug it into your USB and it'll appear as a storage drive on your PC. 
Now it'll have one file named app.upga and you need to delete this first. And then you need to lo locate the same file in the, in the zip file that you extracted and copy it onto the toolkit RC uh, drive. And uh, once you do this, you just need to unplug your, um, uh, your M6D and uh, power it up. If you notice, there are only two firmware files on the website, version 1.01 and version 1.04. And you might, well, you might be wondering why this is. Now, if you got one of the first 100 units of the M6D, it would not have the Korean or Japanese language and it has a smaller firmware area. So uh, you would only be able to upgrade to version 1.01. Uh, you won't be able to, to install the version 1.04 from the website because it'll result in a not enough free space error. Now, I was able to talk to the Toolkit RC support. They provided me a smaller version of the 1.04 firmware. And if you're interested in upgrading your uh, M6D to the newer firmware, but you have one of the early units, then uh, you'll, you'll find the link to that uh, smaller firmware in the description below. Once you update to version 1.01, you'd have the ability to turn off battery selection, which is the five preset profiles that you saw earlier, and uh, go straight to the battery charge settings. And this would also change the cursor color from gray to yellow or blue, depending on which channel you're uh, adjusting settings for. Updating to version 1.04 uh, would only give you uh, you know, minor usability changes and bug fixes. So there you have it. That is my review of the Toolkit RC M6D. And, um, you know, the M8 really gave Toolkit RC a bad name and gave it bad history. Probably got one of the first 100 units of this thing. Um, that's probably why I have had uh, some firmware issues. So that is for the cons, but uh, you know, this, uh, this charger has really great features. It, f it has a really nice uh, user interface. It has a continuous work mode. It has uh, battery profiles. Uh, what else? It has recycle discharge mode. And, and uh, yeah, so uh, it has really, really great features. And also the safety setting uh, features that, uh, that's available. So you don't overcharge or you don't uh, overbalance or you know, leave your batteries on and uh, might, it might cause a fire. So uh, I think that's really great. And I think this M6D is worth giving Toolkit RC another shot. But uh, you know, what do you guys think? I would like to hear what you think in the comments, all right? So also, if you want to get uh, an M6D or anything, do check out my links in the comments. They are affiliate links, uh, so it won't cost you anything if you click on those. But uh, if you do you know, go to those websites and eventually buy something off their website, not necessarily this M6D, you might buy a Q8 in the end, um, then uh, I do get a small percentage of, percentage of that. So. Uh, that helps me create more of these videos. All right, so um, if you like what I do, um, I, also, I also have a coffee link down below. So if you want to buy me coffee, you can do that through that link. And uh, do check that out in the description as well. All right, so I hope you really liked this video. I hope this was very informative and useful to you. If you did, click on that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel, all right? So anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. As always, keep building and keep flying.